Our guest today is Ms. Elito Milano, Bulgarian World Bank Advisor, freelance journalist, and political scientist. Welcome, Ms. Milano. And let us begin uh, with the first question, which is a recent event. Uh, last month, former Bulgarian President Prime Minister uh, Mario Raikov stated that Bulgaria's approval to Serbia's EU membership claim is dependent on the Serbian attitude towards minority Bulgarians living in the country. As an expert of Bulgaria and its various aspects, how would you comment uh, this statement? Uh, what could cause uh, such bold statements within the Prime Ministers of the uh, neighboring Balkan countries? Well, this is a form of policy strategy that uh, Bulgaria dictates for uh, more than a decade. Uh, if um, Sofia wants to become a leading uh, partner, a leading uh, uh, actor in the Balkan policy, the European integration policy, and it wants to uh, get the most dividends uh, from uh, every single country which applies for the EU membership. Uh, for example, Serbia is uh, applying for an EU membership, and uh, Bulgaria wants to uh, uh, wants to uh, not only to make a broader impact in the economy, the Serbian economy, but also to enhance the, the political and uh, human rights uh, the, uh, at the Serbian Bulgarian Sudik Well, um, my next question actually concerns Bulgaria minority living outside Bulgaria. So could you please uh, tell in a few words what are the neighboring countries' attitudes toward Bulgarian living in their country? And um, specifically, uh, mention some places where ethnic Bulgarians live on violence. The attitude depends on the country. Uh, the most uh, significant Bulgarian minorities live in Turkey, Macedonia, Ukraine, Moldova, USA, and Great Britain. For example, in Turkey, the Bulgarian, uh, the persons who have the Bulgarian citizenships are almost fully integrated in the Turkish society. But, uh, for instance, uh, in uh, Great Britain, there are many uh, ethnic Bulgarians who just live in Great Britain for uh, one or two years. Uh, they are mainly from Gypsy origin and Roma origin, and uh, do, uh, they do make quite a of uh, turbulence in the British politics and British society thinking. Uh, but uh, if we see the Moldovan um, uh, example, Bulgarians have their autonomous cultural autonomous uh, status there. Um, it quite depends on the country uh, and how the other country uh, sees uh, uh, see the Bulgarians, for example, if they are potential threat for the, the statehood of the country, but uh, they are not, uh, quite they are quite uh, um, pleasantly integrated in most of the societies. Well, thank you. After mentioning the um, other countries and the towards Bulgarian minorities, I spoke a um, few words about uh, Bulgaria's official governmental relationship with its uh, minorities living outside Bulgaria. So, um, what kind of relationship does Bulgaria make with uh, ethnic Bulgarians around the world? It uh, changes this. Um relationship changes over the, every single government Bulgaria has. For example, the past government of the GEP, the foreign center GEP, uh, there was a ministry for the Bulgarians living abroad. But if we see this current uh, socialist liberal uh, government, which now reigns in Bulgaria, it's not quite that significant. The relationship is a bit looser, a bit not so stable. It changes every single month or quarter of, of a year. Uh, 
this government hasn't got uh, any concrete uh, plan how to deal with the foreign Bulgarians. I think uh, in the future it will be if the current government will prolong the politics from the last government. Thank you. And uh, moving on inside Bulgaria, um, what are the most significant minorities inside Bulgaria? We have to mention three significant minorities inside Bulgaria. The most significant is the Turkish minority, uh, the second is the Roma uh, minority, and the third is the Polak minority. Well, the Turkish minority is quite significant in numbers, and they are they are a traditional minority. Uh, for uh, the last uh, researches, uh, about five or six uh, hundred thousand uh, uh, Turks, uh, national uh, ethnic Turks. Turks live in Bulgaria, and the Gypsies or the Romas uh, about 200 or 300, while the Polacks we have, don't have a clear number uh, about their population inside Bulgaria. Alright, so let us continue with the Turkish minority. Um, we can hear very little about Turkish living in Bulgaria. For example, did they get the um, official recognition from the Bulgarian government as a minority? Well, the Bulgarian constitution don't recognize as national minorities. They uh, only recognize ethnic, ethnic, ethnic groups. Uh, uh, the Turkish minority is quite uh, integrated in the Bulgarian society. It has its roots, uh, which back up to uh, Ottoman, uh, Ottoman uh, times. Um, they are uh, quite uh, uh, pleasantly uh, recognized inside the society. They have, they form a sector in the Bulgarian economy, and uh, I think um, there isn't any quite uh, big conflict. Uh, between the Bulgarians and the Turks. The Turks. Well, thank you. Um, could you please elaborate uh, on the Bulgarian society's attitude towards uh, minorities like Turkish who are with the Muslim faith? So, are there any uh, specific tensions coming from the difference in the faith? Uh, or if there are some tensions, um, are these religious, social, or, or ethnic tension between Bulgarians and Turkish? Uh, yes, there are some tensions, some minor conflicts. For instance, a couple of years ago in Sofia there was a uh, quarrel uh, between, uh, for, uh, between nationalist uh, groups and national political groups, nationalist political groups such as the Ataka and Turkish uh, uh, Muslims, uh, but uh, the, the, that's not uh, a significant conflict. It's uh, more uh, more the political conflict than a cultural conflict. Uh, the Muslims have the, uh, the Bulgarian Muslims, for instance, the Turks, the Polacks, or other uh, uh, Sunni groups. Uh, have their own cultural uh, roots in the Bulgarian society and they are accepted and it's uh, on the daily basis there isn't any conflict between significant conflict between Bulgarians and Muslims. Alright, so um, further, can you tell us the nature of the Turkish Bulgarian government relationship concerning minority policy? So uh, the two countries' relationship is completely flawless, or are there some uh, minor quarrels arising from time to time? Well, uh, in the 1990s, there were well uh, minor quarrels, uh, minor conflicts between Turkey and Bulgaria, such as the lands of uh, uh, 
uh, Bulgarians who lived uh, in the past uh, century in Turkey. They were uh, um, they were nationalized in the 20th century by Turkey, and uh, also the the lands of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church. But these were minor questions which the Erdogan uh, government uh, managed to to properly uh, put aside uh, the relations between Turkey and Bulgaria in the time of the Buddhist government. Uh, it was very good, very uh, uh, very. Uh, Proper. I think uh, the two countries' relations uh, managed to to get on a higher level in the past years. Okay, um, let us talk a few words about the um, political party in Bulgaria, mainly representing the Turkish minority, which is named the Movement for Rights and Freedom. So what are their strengths and weaknesses? Who is their leader? What is the structure of the party? And um, uh, finally, um, are they successful in representing the Turkish minority in Bulgaria? This is the most successful party in the modern political history of Bulgaria. It's, uh, uh, it originates uh, origins back to the 1990s, early 1990s, uh, it was uh, um, uh, established by Ahmed Bhutan. Um, till he was the main leader of this party till very end of 2012, 2000, uh, starting of 2013. Uh, but he uh, gave up the, the official uh, presentation of the party for uh, he gave it to Lukwim Astan. Lukwim Astan is the political leader of this party, but Ahmed Dugan is the, the great cardinal behind the Turkish political sphere of, in Bulgaria. Uh, he has a very significant power, not just in the Bulgarian politics of Medvedan and his uh, party, but also in the Turkish minority uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, many say that uh, Ahmed Dugan personally dictates who gets money from Turkey, who has the, the, the governmental uh, government of jobs, uh, who has uh, profit, who, who is, uh, who has, uh, who will be a uh, high level official in the Turkish party. Uh, it's very successful, it's very stable, it's, uh, voters are very, um, very, um, every election, uh, Every single election in Bulgaria, you can say that the movement for freedom and rights has a potential base of 12 to 15 percent, and it's very high. You can't make a government without the uh, without the help of this party. And uh, for every single uh, important question, you have to ask Ahmed Bogdan and his party for his approval. Alright, so I suggest we move on to, the, uh, to another minority group, the second largest. Um, concerning minority policies, are there any major differences in the legal status of Roma people and ethnic uh, Turkish people in Bulgaria? Well, uh, for, for our first glimpse on this question, I think uh, the Bulgarian constitution don't make uh, any difference between uh, one minority or another, but of course uh, Romans are less integrated in the Bulgarian society. They don't have this kind of stable political representation which uh, the Turks have. Uh, in the Bulgarian parliament there is 
only a couple of Rome uh, politicians. Uh, the, they they pose a threat to the to the stableness of the Bulgarian economy because the unemployment rate between uh, in the Roman society is very uh, high, very large. Uh, every second, uh, Roma doesn't have a uh, job. Uh, they uh, they do make quite of problems uh, between uh, conflicts between the Bulgarian Turkish society and the Roma society. Um, could you please tell me a few words that how the recent change of regime the uh, the ending of the communist era and the recent EU membership uh, affected the Roma minorities and the Bulgaria. Is it affected anyhow? Yes, the, not only the change of the totalitarian regime in Bulgaria, but also the Bulgaria's Euro Atlantic invitation do uh, change the Roma's uh, lifestyle. Um, a significant part of the Roma society fled Bulgaria, left uh, towards a uh, Western European country, and Bulgaria uh, at this moment has uh, quite a diplomatic uh, problems uh, uh, with France, with Germany, with Great Britain, and uh, for the, this Roma problem, Great uh, Britain, for instance, um, may jeopardize Bulgaria's Schengen integration. Also, Germany uh, stresses this problem uh, very constantly. And uh, I think if uh, the Bulgarian government don't improve the Roma integration in the Bulgarian society, it will be a uh, significant problem in the future. And as our last question, uh, you mentioned that ACA, which is an outspoken national political party in Bulgaria, and they are um, pretty um, occasionally campaigning with further deprivation of rights from minority groups. Um, are these threats are real? And if they are real, could you mention some visible signs of these threats? Well, this is a very interesting part in the Bulgarian uh, political uh, system. Uh, they are part of the Skurban government. They do govern Bulgaria in a coalition uh, with the Bulgarian Socialists and the Turkish party. Uh, till uh, the very last uh, elections, uh, there was a very uh, very big feud between the Turkish party and the Paka. But in the background, you can see this is just a political uh, theater. They don't uh, pose a threat to the human uh, rights, to the minority rights. This is just an advertisement of nationalist uh, rhetorics. But in the background, uh, as you can see in the past few months, uh, the Ataka and the Turkish party uh, made a pact, a pact how to uh, how to uh, cooperate, how to cooperate and uh, to revise the standholds, the how to get the, the share of um, of uh, governmental money, public money, and public uh, public uh, positions. Well, Mr. Love, thank you for your participation. This is the end of the